Hello there. Um, good to be back. Um, it's been a while. It is still hot and sweaty in Seville. Um, but I wanted to do a little video um, basically before the term started with a few ideas for things you can do uh, as you kick off. I mean, there are basically two <laughs> schools of thought here. One is just to keep enjoying your holiday and forget about the coming term uh, and, and keep charging your batteries up. The only thing is sometimes I think you can end up starting back and you realise, ooh, you know, oh my word, I've not got anything. So I think maybe sometimes in the last week or couple of weeks, it's good to just, you know, just go back with something in your back pocket. So I thought we'd do this little video, um, maybe 10 or so things you can do round about now-ish, just to give you something for that first week when you start back. Um, first thing you could do is, if you haven't got this, order this book. Let's face it, if you've been watching these videos uh, and you've watched them all up to now, you're fairly sold on the sort of angle I'm coming at. Look at this, there's 300 pages and more of, uh, of, of love and lovely ideas there. Um, so you could have that, if you ordered it on Amazon, uh, then, uh, you know, you could have that, that could be with you by next week and you could already have read a couple of chapters as you start. Or another thing you could do is send a little email to your director, coordinator, um, senior teacher, head of department, ask them to order it for you. Um, but uh, do make it clear that you're going to need this book for six months because the ideal thing to do would be to read a chapter a week and let it drip feed into your practice. So let them know, hey, you know, I want you to order the book, but I'm going to need to take it home and have it for a while. After those six months, we can put it in the teacher's room on the shelf for somebody else to read. But it's really, it's a book to read, not just to flick through before your lesson to give you a quick idea. It's methodology. Um, so there's that. You could order a different book by somebody else. Um, I mean, it's just nice, I think, to, to start the term off with some ideas drip feeding in. So uh, if you've had your eye on a methodology book for a while, um, now could be the time. So uh, a few ideas there, all based around ordering a book. Next, um, if you're still on holiday somewhere nice, why not take two or three pictures? I know we all take pictures when we go on holiday, but we don't always take them with the intention of sharing them. So take a, take you know two or three pictures that you could share with your students when you get back. You could even create a little text around them or, or you know, a little anecdote. Something so that at the end of your first lesson, hey, whoop, my mouse has fallen down. Would you like to see some pictures? Um, and, uh, and you can show them something. Again, it's just having something in your back pocket. Or you could go one step further and you could take a little video of yourself somewhere. Um, I would recommend a one minute video, nice and quick. Tell them uh, where you are, why you're there, what you're doing, what they can see in the background and say goodbye. Just a one minute generic video. And then you can play it to them. You could turn it into an authentic listening, ask them to transcribe what you've written or write down three or four details. And you've got, um, you've got a, an authentic listening for your first few lessons, uh, something that's you know, a little bit more interesting than diving straight into the course book. Um, and also, if you're doing something like you know, asking them to talk about their holidays, then you're providing a model and leading the way. You could also prepare a short text for your first few classes. Um, write down four things that you've done over the summer, um, how they made you feel and why for each one. Then you've got a, a short model text. And I'm going to talk about these two last ideas in the future, in a future publication, um, in a little bit more detail. But there you go. That's something that you can uh, play about with. It's always nice to go, you know, and then into class with something. Like I say, if you have a short paragraph about three or four things you did in the holidays, it's not some generic text that chat GPT has conjured up for you. It's from you. It's actually real. And then they can use that as a model to write something real about their summer. Um, so I think, you know, real, 
authentic, original, something that's actually come from a human mind is always going to be better than something that's randomly been churned out um, by a program. Another thing you could do is, I, I'm pretty sure, if you're anything like me for certain, you will have somewhere amongst your papers, you'll have a stack of essays, maybe from this last year, maybe from the year before, that you never ended up returning to your students for some reason. Um, and, um, you know, you can discover them. You can discover them in the strangest of places. Um, what you could do is take one of those stacks, take half a dozen writings and just correct them. Not with the intention of giving them back. Just run through them and find 15, 20, 25 typical errors for that level, if it's a level you're going to be teaching again, and write them down. And there you've got your plan of attack for typical mistakes for the first week or two. You've got a number of options then. Um, what you could do is have, a, you know, error of the day. Nobody will be defensive because nobody's actually made that error, but you could just choose to target that each day. So first lesson, guys, this is how, uh, you know, this is how some people write because. Why is it wrong? Um, ah, teacher, because it's got an O there. It should be an A, rock and roll. You're being proactive with uh, error correction. It's like error prediction um, because we all know the systematic errors that our students will make. So you can use some old writings just as a reminder. If you have been efficient all last year and you marked everything, you could just go and look back over some old uh, writings that students might have sent you just to collect those errors again. Another thing you can do is uh, you can play a uh, sort of Connect Four uh, grid game. Again, I've detailed that in one of these chapters. I call it Sun, Moon, Heart, Flower. Um, but uh, if you haven't seen it, I've been doing it for years. Um, what we do is we take some typical errors. Normally I'll divide the board into about um, 24. <laughs> Uh, put an error in each box, as in here, I'll drop in an image, Bing, image one. Um, and then number the boxes, Bing. another image. And then we put the class in teams, each team has a symbol, and then uh, in turn, they take turns to tell us what the problem is in the box, tell us what's correct. And if they manage to do it each time, they get their symbol in the square. They're trying to get three in a row, diagonal, straight, uh, you know, horizontal, vertical. And each time they get three in a row, they get a point. Uh, it's, it turns error correction, error feedback into something that's a little bit more palatable. Um, and if we start off the year with that clearly before anybody's made any errors, uh, then again, like I say, we're being a little bit proactive there um, and people aren't going to be defensive. They're more likely to remember these errors. Obviously, as you get writings in during the year, you can continue um, that sort of feedback. Um, I, I use it for all levels from intermediate up to C2 level. So that's that, that's the sun, uh, moon, heart, flower, game. If you've got a big class and you need a couple more teams, uh, then you can add a tree, rainbow, fish, all nice simple symbols that you can put on the board quickly. Um, what else can you do? If you know what course book you're going to be using um, next term, there's a couple of things you could do. Um, first thing you could do is to go through the course book and just type out or write down all of the conversation questions 
in the book. You know the sort of conversation questions they use to start, uh, start a unit or the conversation questions to get discussion going after a reading text. You can put them all together in a nice list and they can be your conversation questions for the year. There's no harm repeating conversation questions. But that means that, again, instead of asking chat GPT to um, give you some random conversation questions, each time you want to get your students in pairs speaking, you could use those questions because those are the questions that, in theory, the material in the book will be preparing them for. And they should be able to draw on the language from each unit uh, once they've done it to you know to better express themselves you know and you can also do a kind of uh, test teach test thing um, by practicing or by trying those questions before they've done a unit you can see what they know that'll give you an idea and by repeating them later maybe a different week different month with different partners uh, then you can see you know has the language fed in are they using the material the items the language items that we studied so uh, that's one thing you can do. Another thing you can do, if you want to be a bit alternative, um, you could go through the course book that you're using with a level and you could make a quick list of all the regular verbs that occur in the course book. Not the irregulars ones, they're, they're not the irregular ones, they're all, they're in the back, you know, in the column one, two, three. I'm talking about the regular ones and you could make your regular verb list just like the irregulars with the present the past and the past participle the thing is a lot of the time uh, and again i mentioned this in understanding teenagers a lot of the time uh, students uh, will say you know teacher what's the past of this verb what's the past of uh, bake uh, and you say well if it's not on the irregular verb list it's regular it's a kind of back to front way of doing things because if they haven't learnt the irregular verbs they won't know. So I, I like to start with the regular verbs sometimes. It seems more logical. They're easier to learn. They're not 100% regular because sometimes the spelling changed, letters double up, uh, you know, uh, a Y might change to an I. So they're not as regular as you think, but it's another interesting angle. You could try that and see how you go. Um, okay, what else? Anything else uh, you could try for the next year? Yes, um, one last idea. As you are scrolling away, you know, passing the last of the summer nights before the new term, if you come across any interesting YouTube videos, especially if they're sort of celebrities, actors, uh, pop stars, um, or, you know, YouTuber influencers, if you come across a very short stretch of listening, just note it down, save the link and write down the time. I'm talking about five second stretches. So that in that first week or two weeks, you could do a few micro listenings with your students. And by that, I mean, you say to them, guys, I'm gonna play you, you know, I'm gonna play you a very short five second clip of this person speaking. I wanna see if you can write down every word they say and get them actually doing some intensive but short listenings. See, you know, it will help them with word segmentation. It will help them, you know, try to uh, decode the stream of speech as Richard Coldwell might uh, term it. So uh, that, my friends, I think, uh, are a few things that you could be thinking about. For the new ter term basically what we want is we want you to be excited there wants to be something on that first day um, that you can go in and you're a little bit curious about how it's going to go a little bit excited something slightly different it's like okay i want to see you know if the students like my story or if it works you know i'm going to enjoy playing them this clip i'm going to enjoy um you know, introducing these errors to see if we can get a jump, you know, on accuracy uh, and, and language control, for example. Just something so that you're a little bit psyched up for that first week uh, of term as well. Strength and energy with your teaching. And uh, I'll be seeing you in a few more clips over the course of the new term. Bye.